good afternoon all Mike, i Mike, hope you guys Mike are check, enjoying Mike check. Mike check. i am a brain plumber a car a neurologist so i fix broken brains but i think the one thing which fascinates me is the nature the way our body and the brains are made so i believe in this neuro psycho neuro physio immuno endocrinology which means it all starts here but then goes to the body 30 billion billion chemical reactions 30 billion billion chemical reactions per second is happening in every single cell. Isn't it fascinating? It's just unbelievable. So I want to take your opinion of the audience as a vote. We are betting big on AI. How many of you bet on this natural human intelligence? Raise your hands, please. Perfectly fine. And how many think that AI will be able to supersede that HI at some point in time? Fantastic. So that is what we are going to bet on today. So thank you for putting that up. Let me ask another question before I go on to the panelists. How many of you are ready to go and sit inside a driverless car? Raise your hands up. Fantastic. How many of you are ready to go in a doctorless hospital to get yourselves treated? And that is exactly what we are talking about when we talk about artificial intelligence, deep learning. It is my great pleasure to welcome three fantastic speakers. And I'm going to start with the professor, Dr. Song here. <clears throat> he is a professor of machine learning and artificial intelligence at Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence. How do you see the future of artificial intelligence when it comes to healthcare? Your inputs. Okay, thank you for the uh, organizers. Um, I think the potential for artificial intelligence in healthcare is also enormous. So essentially, nowadays we are looking at, uh, in some sense, uh, data from all different scales. If you think about disease, it's really um, a multi-scale problem. So disease can spread in society and it's causing pandemics. And when it comes to individual, then it is uh, some, uh, something related to the coordination of different organs. And you can go another level down, which go to the cellular level, and you see lots of molecules. Actually, you need to collect data in dif these different levels to understand disease. And, and being able to find we call target for the disease and, and also design the corresponding treatment molecule for it. So in this different level, there are a huge no amount of data. We need to be able to uh, design AI models to be able to understand and integrate this data and, and find the corresponding cure. And it's really um, uh, uh, challenging and there's also lots of opportunity for us. I think we are working on uh, understanding those data and finding the corresponding treatment or, or, or drugs for for those corresponding diseases, yeah. So I think we have been hearing about Neuralink and we have been uh, hearing about the deep learning potential of the data, etc. So how do you think in terms of the reality? We did see the vaccines which were very easily brought up, you know, in the pandemic. There was a normal, uh, the natural course is about eight years and we were able to expedite that about a year and a half. In terms of the therapeutics of different diseases, how fast do you think that AI can be instrumental in bringing all the drug discoveries and all that you're talking about? And what is really happening? in United Arab Emirates uh, to that extent from uh, the contribution of your university? Well, that, um, let me just find some examples, right. So actually, um, as I mentioned earlier, that there are multiple different types of data involved in um, you know, pandemics or complex diseases such as cancer or aging-related disease. Um, just to give you some example, for instance, uh, nowadays the AI model can, for instance, uh, uh, predict the structure of proteins. And protein uh, is a very important molecule uh, in uh, designing drugs or the malfunction of uh, some of the cellular function. So actually, uh, we are using AI models to be to predict the structure of, uh, uh, for instance, proteins and or predict the structure of the uh, drugs we design. So the structure is very important for uh, you know uh, understanding the disease and also designing drugs. So being able to predict that and avoiding a long process of going wet lab experiment is already helping a lot in, uh, in terms of uh, designing drugs. And you can also look at data from pandemic level. So uh, you might 
collect the trajectory data uh, from the, the spread of the disease. And actually using AI model, you are able to, for instance, uh, build model for that, understand the spread, and design some policy to actually uh, you know, uh, slow down the spread of the disease. Uh, there are multiple kind of uh, examples you can find that AI is actually uh, uh, helping a lot in, in, the, in the process. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. And I'm going to come to Mr. Thamir. Uh, I am going to pose the same question that in your uh, vision, how is the AI necessary tool in shaping the healthcare system? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, assalamu alaikum, good morning or good afternoon. We are working since the morning, and like 20 minutes ago, we gathered outside and we made some artificial intelligence, and we said that we need to make this session more an interactive one because we're approaching the break and the lunch and all that. So before I will answer it, and my answer will be just summarizing what we heard this morning, I will ask the audience one question, and after that I will ask you why. So do you think an artificial intelligence is an option or a must? If you think that it's an option, raise, raise your hand. So, is it a must on artificial intelligence? Okay. Pretty, pretty so, much everybody believes it's must. Absolutely. So, I will ask one or two volunteers to tell me why it is a must. So, anybody in the audience? The mic, why it is a must? Why artificial intelligence is must? It's not an option in our lives anymore. We are in industry 4.0 and times are changing. So, any volunteers? Any volunteers? Yes. Up at the back, please, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think it's a must because the amount of data that's being generated by all the research across the globe, it's becoming nearly impossible for any one individual to comprehend and amass that data on a, on a scale that, 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 we, that we can think of today. And, and as this process progresses, it's going to be very important to use machine learning to solve this problem. Yes, absolutely. I believe it's Dr. George. So we are going back to the definition of the artificial intelligence. What is the artificial intelligence definition? It is the ability to process massive, complex data sets and predict and automated insights for the healthcare and for, for the others. If we were talking about the hysterical data, in 1805, the world population was one billion. It took the world 123 years to reach two billions. And then it took them like only 33 years to reach three billions. And since that, around like each 14 years to 12 years, the world population will increase by 1 billion. Yesterday, it was more than 8 billion. So you have a huge number of population, and you have limited resources, and you would like really to live an equality life and also to have all your needs served and part of it is the health care. That's why the Industrial Revolution, it came in 1780 with the Industrial Revolution 1 and then 2, 3 and we are now living in the Industrial Revolution number 4 which is using some of the artificial intelligence. So in order to provide the mankind with its needs in order to make the patient journey more enjoyable and more smooth and in order to raise the quality of work, we need the artificial intelligence. And also, if we look at it from financial point of view, artificial intelligence is bringing a lot of solution that it will reduce the cost of the health care ecosystem as in general. We are talking about the whole value chain. We are not focusing in one area of it. It is a total ecosystem. So this is basically a nutshell. What's uh, I think, Mr. Thamir, you brought up a very beautiful point. And I'm a clinician 
and I have never understood this point. Maybe you guys can also help me understand that. Let's say we have doctors being graduated from the same university, the same type of education, the same medications which are available, the same type of consultation which happens, the same radiology, the same pathology, everything is same but the outcomes are different. What do you think is making that outcome to be different? Frankly, I as a clinician have been scratching my head over it and one thing which comes to me, Mr. Thamer, is possibly with all the 25,000 genome structures, the amount of the chemical reactions that we have within us, there is some form of a role of personalized medicine and we all agree to that, that there is something happening within me which is treating me or which is not helping me treat. And I feel AI has a huge role, the deep learning and the machine algorithms, because this is what the answer that we need if we want to have the quality life. And as you mentioned, I think the betterness of the world or the betterment of the world can be with the use of these effective technologies. So on to that, I am going to bring Mr. Junaid on to the point about his vision about the technology. And why don't you tell us what you guys do at PRCS? He's the Chief Technology Officer of Pure CS, the IT arm of the Pure Health. So over to you, Mr. Junaid. Thank you, Dr. Shweda. So uh, uh, glad to be here. Uh, the discussion which we just had on the uh, AI and the need and the must for that particular thing, I think uh, the basic definition for population health uh, requires that you uh, assess the needs and risk of a population and then analyze the data to improve you know, the outcomes and the care that you actually provide. That is not possible if you actually go with the traditional methods that we actually go with. So in that regard, definitely AI and the predictive models, and there are so many cases around the world which are actually having predictive models to do different things. How do you not you know, improve the, and not exacerbate the situation of a chronic uh, patient by having a certain type of medication? Those kind of models and others are, are happening. Similarly, on the IoT devices, there are so much of information which is coming out right now which can be fed into models that allow you in order to do those things. And then the big data, of course, which is actually helping in order to even predict pandemics and do this. So it's, 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 it's really interesting that with the, with the morning discussion as to exactly that healthcare is behind the others of, of this thing. Amazon, like three, four years ago, can predict uh, with more than 90% accuracy as to exactly in which part of the country what people will buy just on the basis of what they are looking at in their app or they're searching on Google or outside factors. So the same thing is, is, is only possible when you have got the processing powers or the models that allows you in order to do that uh, particular thing. So having said that, that's the, 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 the goal that the healthcare industry right now with the huge sums, I don't think there's any other industry which has that amount of data to that particular thing. So it's a very, very, you know, case of uh, having the AI technologies embedded in order to do that particular work. Uh, we at uh, uh, Pure CS with working with our, our, our Pure Health uh, uh, partners uh, for that are working with all the uh, hospitals, clinics. We have got the whole you know, uh, bandwidth of S2D, uh, the complete chain. And in that regard, I think we are working on a multiple of areas uh, with respect to as to exactly uh, developing the analytical models in order to cross businesses, in order to understand it not just from a, you know, a hospital perspective or a lab perspective or anything. How do you actually make the sense out of all of those and those models, how, how they come out? I think uh, I'm going to uh, put yeah. a point there. I think yeah. the data should talk to each other, yeah. which, is, which is the biggest thing, and that is what has to happen uh, yeah. Yeah. To, to make it you know, sort yeah. of readable better in terms of the quality, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, actually, I would like to add one yeah. point. Um, uh, yeah. First, I would like to echo the point that uh, several panelists has already discussed. Um, machine learning or AI model is able to ingest this huge amount of data and complex data. So actually, another very interesting thing about uh, AI model is also it touches the foundation AI is uh, we want this type of model to be able to, we call the generalized to new cases, actually. One uh, potential kind of uh, advantage of AI model is it can actually make prediction to those cases we haven't seen before. That's called the generalization ability of uh, this AI model. So we actually, as scientists, work very hard to make sure uh, these AI models 
first is able to ingest this huge amount of complex data, and the second, make sure it's able to perform, you know, escort in some new cases and test data. And it can even do things such as uh, we call mixture or expert, uh, taking, you know, even uh, uh, data or opinion from human expert and merge with the AI model together to come up with something even, even more accurate. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to uh, come back to Mr. Thamer and he can explain more use cases uh, from the AI and the healthcare. And he can elaborate what is happening really in the ecosystem of uh, UAE. Okay. So I think we should first, all of us, agree on what's the healthcare ecosystem. I think one of the gentlemen asked a question this morning. What's the healthcare ecosystem? It's a supply chain. It's building blocks. It will start from the fine chemicals that are being used in the pharma industry. And it will go all the way to the ABI manufacturing, to the manufacturing of the pharmaceutical companies. It will go to distribution, warehousing, promotion, marketing, and it will go to the healthcare outlets, pharmacies or chains or whatever. And also, it will uh, have something to do with the healthcare providers. And the other also aspects of the healthcare or the ecosystem is the medical insurance, which plays an important part. You have also the fitness centers, you have the healthcare dietary uh, restaurant or providers, and then you have at the center of that is the human being or the patient or the potential patient itself. Uh, in each of these blocks, there is the usage for artificial intelligence, but you will not optimize it unless you have the linkage between all of that. So you have data feeding each other this will bring the utmost benefit of the artificial intelligence. If I will take uh, maybe uh, two uh, specific examples, one of them it's been under trial for the medical insurance company. So all of those examples in one way or another is touching the patient and also is touching the providers of the, the healthcare, hospitals, physician, or whatever, but some, some of them is more related to a specific uh, building block. Uh, when I was in the US in 2010, one of the car insurance company, they created a gadget, and it was an optional. You can just hook it to your car, install it in your car, it will monitor your driving behaviors. And based on that, they will determine your auto insurance premium. Meaning that if you are a good driver, then you will have your premium is, is down. If you are not a good driver or you have some other behaviors in, in your driving, then your premium will go up. In the UK, currently, there are trials from the medical insurance companies that they have an option that you will wear your... I don't to be a marketer, but it mainly it's like Apple Watch, that it will measure all of your health uh, measurement, and it will feed it to the medical insurance company along with the designated health meal providers that you're buying from them, and this, it will reduce your medical insurance premium. I can see this one is coming in the future which is, if you look into it, it's a good thing because it will force individuals to take care of their health and also it will reduce the premium of the medical uh, insurance. This is one of those examples that is coming soon. And a couple of the companies, if you had noticed, and maybe Apple, they are emphasizing more and more in their medical application and they have a very interesting slogan that you are taking care of your patients mm -hmm. so they can live a healthier life and they have other ads so they are ahead of the game and it's coming maybe within like two years or something like that 
Absolutely. Yeah. I think to that point, I remember I visited a Honda showroom and a research and experiment was going on. You had to take a shirt and then go and check out the cars. So you literally had to wear a special shirt that had some sensors for sweat glands, that had sensors for uh, pulse, HRV, and you just walked in and you had to just go and have a look at the car. In fact, they predicted that which is the car that you're going to buy or you're not going to buy. So I think the time has come for profiling and we will have some sort of a car or something instead of an Emirates ID where we would say that this is my genetic imprint, this is all the data that I hold and this is what is going to help me which is going to help clinicians like us also to make uh, decisions. Coming to that I feel one important thing is that we need to have AI or machine learning in our medical education system. So I would like to talk about some of the career prospects for this from uh, Dr. Song because we just discussed that outside that I think it is so important for for each of us to be aware. So my spiritual teacher used to say it beautifully, you are aware, you care, and then you dare. So I think the time has come that we all need to be at least aware. What, what is your point on that, uh, uh, Mr. Song? Right, so um, fortunately I have been working on uh, internet company as well, and nowadays I work a lot on healthcare related kind of problems. Uh, I see actually AI or machine learning or data science are needed in every one of these industry. So um, actually, uh, every one of these area has already generated lots of data, and uh, we need people to understand this data, you know, model this complexity of data. Somehow there's a, a common set of skill behind uh, this data analysis. So uh, in the university, we are actually cultivating students who are able to, you know, understand the data. Uh, it, it doesn't matter whether it's come where so image or a natural language or in a tabular form. So we are training students to be able to process this data. You know, uh, with additional understanding to a particular field such as finance or internet or healthcare, they are able to quickly customize their skill to work in different industries. So uh, I actually I see that it doesn't matter whether it's in internet or in, in healthcare, uh, such students are in high need and there's lots of opportunity or job opportunity created. So yes, I, I was reading company. a report. There are millions, I think, literally millions of AI engineers which are required across the globe and we will have to really yeah. ramp up our production in terms yeah. of that, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. but they will not replace the physician role. 100%. They are complementing. No, yeah. absolutely. That's, that's, that's the very yeah. fundamental philosophical no, question. Dr. Shwela, in, in there, I think the, well, there was a study by the, when the third revolution came. At that time, any out of the 10 people who got unemployed, four of them never got the job. But with the fourth industrial revolution, if they are not retrained properly, nine out of ten will not be able to have any work to do. Wow. So I think there is a very, very important area in order to ensure that the trainings and the programs which actually run in this direction, and that you mentioned it's not about just one specific, it's the, the knowledge and the tool in order to operate and work towards those particular things, because then it's a matter of, because there are cross-industry correlations that actually work into the AI models as well. It's not about just the data you have and you run it a program. It can never be yeah. in silo, absolutely. And I think to Mr. Thamir's point, uh, and I asked about that, how how many of us are ready to sit in a driverless car? Most of us are. How many of us are ready to sit in a pilotless plane? So a plane does have all the infrastructure or all the, all the machines which have, but we do still need a pilot. Pilot may just be sipping a cup of coffee. I think the doctor of future is going to read that data and also read in between the lines and be there for the patient. And I think the human touch, the empathy that is never going to go anywhere, which is the foundation and the fundamental, I think the soft skills which will never, never be away, but AI definitely has a big future. We have about a couple of minutes, so I just can take one question from the audience to the esteemed panel. Thank you. And if not, obviously we'll open again. Yes, Anybody please. questions? Yeah, right here. Yeah. You can just introduce yourself. Okay, thank you. Ismail Shihada, CEO for Pharma Sector in Saudi Chemical. Just my question to uh, Mr. Song, that um, you mentioned a very important point, that you mentioned that the artificial intelligence is not just we look after the current diseases or the current problem to help the patient journey with, within the current diseases, but also it will help in the future to predict some cases that not have been observed, uh, which is a very important point. But my question to you, how do you see that the adoption of the artificial intelligence in our region in the Middle East, Africa, 
and what kind of the three important factors or points that need to be taken to accelerate this adoption to be ready uh, to, to, to cope with the changes and the transformation in the healthcare industry with the artificial intelligence? Okay, it's a complex question, <laughs> actually. Um, um, so, uh, actually, I, I, I talked about generalization ability of uh, AI models, right? It actually touches upon this question as well. So, uh, for instance, uh, when you uh, use data from, uh, for instance, America to train your model and you try to apply the model to Middle East or other continent, there may be some biases there, right? Uh, there may be some variable that is not captured in your model, right? So, uh, in the machine learning or AI community, we know this is a problem for the AI model. It's called out of distribution uh, generalization problem. So, somehow, uh, we ha I have to either collect a small amount of data from a particular continent, for instance, to uh, quickly adapt the model, we call it transfer the model to different places, right? Um, uh, typically, the way we do it is we use, uh, the, you know, uh, data from a particular continent and pre-chain a model which are good enough and then we can use the model in the new places, collect a small amount of data, and uh, overall that uh, it helps the model generalize better to see the new cases, right? So this is the technical kind of side that you will allow the model to, to adapt well to different uh, data, right? Yeah. Fantastic, so thank you. I think I'm going to leave the audience with the question that it's never going to be just betting on AI or just on the human interface. It's always going to be some form of an interface between the human intelligence and artificial intelligence. And I think these are the humans who deserve that round of applause for making that happen. So thank you very much uh, for this esteemed panel. Thank you. Thank you.